So he said, you know, Jean-Michel is so cerebral and he lives so much in his brain that you could put him anywhere and it would be, it would, just wouldn't matter. It's like, it's not like you're unaware of your environment, but it just in some way doesn't matter because you're living in your brain and not... I think it definitely makes a difference, that. though, from here in Hawaii, you know. I mean, I think I have to learn more just not to work around what's around me and just work with what I think, I guess. I shouldn't let what's around me affect my work at all, I think. Just, just work on what I normally work on. Do you still see yourself as naive the way you described yourself as a kid? Yeah. You don't feel like... I'm, I'm always embarrassed of the, of the past, always, you know. I always feel like if I knew more, I wouldn't have done that or something like this. Or... I mean, naive, too, in relation to this incredibly high-pressure, competitive art world that you're part of. Do you maintain a distance from it so that you don't get cynical about it? I don't think the art world is a thing or any sick group of people. They're all mercenaries. Try to make as much money as they can. It's fast, 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 I think a 45 minute argument <laughs> about business versus creative. Yeah. Now, everybody, my name is Intuna e. Curry, business side. <laughs> and I guess you. Jody Notch, the creative side. Welcome to the Ego Trip, the weekly podcast that explores the different aspects of motivation, ambition, and you guessed it, the ego. Let's do it. Welcome to the Ego Church. So we're trying to, from week to week, adjust this thing in a way that our styles fit and make sense and kind of meet in the middle. Yeah. And the show is called The Ego Trip. Absolutely. And Mr. Jody Notch being the creative that he <laughs> is, was tripping very hard. <laughs> Cause I gotta, I gotta keep the, I gotta keep the authentic. All right, presence so, in here, man. So if we're gonna keep it authentic, then explain what the beef was. What was the problem? Round one. All right, so the problem is here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should get on here and um and just basically have the conversations that we have on the daily, on here, and and. Not so much, not saying that we don't have no structure or anything, or we don't have that, but we have uh, some ways, some some form of fashion of some type of like where we can fully express ourselves in its full capacity. And I feel like in so many ways, uh, you try to patronize me. Like <laughs> I'm not in order. Like I don't have no order. I don't have no structure. I don't have no nothing. Okay, and I'm just trying so, to go organically into this. And so just, by patronizing. Yeah. What Jody Notch is trying to say is that when I sit back and say, okay, I need to understand your perspective and your vision. Let me give you the full floor to speak. That is what he calls patronizing. No, it's, it's the things you say. You do, you, be, you do this. You be like, hey, hey, dude, see, this is what, where I'm trying to come from is a space of like, I want to make sure that I have these points and I got this and I got that and I got my... You know, everything together. I, I'm, I'm trying to teach and I'm trying to do this. And I'm just out here just wanting to rogue everybody. Just give just everybody show up just, and yeah, Char and just Charlemagne the show. Don't give a care about right. nothing and just state my opinion. And, you know, you pay me a picture like I'm just narcissistic with the whole thing. Like it's just me, me, me. Well, here's the thing. I find it very telling that you use the word narcissistic <laughs> because that is very true. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's what you feel that I'm being. If I am the business side, so let's say that the business side is organized, methodical, plans yeah. this thing out. Yeah. My goal with this podcast, The Ego Trip, was that from week to week, we are giving the audience something that they can take away from each episode and say, you know what? I didn't know that before that book. They, he, he referenced or they referenced or talked about. I never heard of that. We I, can't do that in raw conversation. 
That's what I'm saying. I just think in open discussion, open discussion is cool. I'm for that. I just think it leaves a lot of room for two people to have a conversation that may not necessarily feed the third party, which is the audience that's listening in. That's all I'm saying, man. All right. But I mean, but with that said though, that's what we do on a day. That's all I'm trying to say is keep the the original stuff. See, we we are we're always texting every day. We talk every day. And then we have these extravagant topics that I'll be listening to while we're talking on the phone and be like, man, we should have had this content on our podcast on the Eagle Trip. And if we if we were to take that the content that we be having on our telephone uh, conversations and in our day to day personal conversations when we face to face and we put that in here, this would be a successful show. It would be so beautiful. you're trying to say that the show is not successful without that? I mean, we're not successful yet because we're in the you know what I mean we're still beginning in the beginning stage. Of course, if everybody's listening to this right now, seeing that we're still trying to figure it out, but at the same time, here's the problem. <laughs> He's upset because on the last couple of episodes, he feels that he didn't express himself loudly enough or or you didn't your personality didn't shine through yeah. the way that you liked. You weren't loud and jumping all over the place. No, I just I wouldn't I wouldn't I didn't have the right atmosphere for me to even do that. Like smoke and incense. Yes, and all I of gotta that. have doves flying in here. <laughs> <laughs> I need doves, I need green M and M's. When I do it, so that's what I'm saying. But in this whole sense, if you have, if you you have it all, and you have your points, and you have everything. I don't feel like there's no connection with the both of us when we're both supposed to be on here, getting engaging in that conversation, and 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 I feel like it should be stimulated in a way to where we just keep on uh, flowing up, with it okay. and building up, and then people can follow the conversation in in a certain way. All right, so here's. And I feel the, like you're trying to Mr. Roger the whole. No. Mr. Roger, dude, I would. I'm offended by that, Mr. Roger. I mean, my bad. Well, dude, you, you should have given me. You should have given me. I would have taken Lavar Burton on Reading Rainbow. Okay, that would have been all right, fitting. All right. Lavar go, Burton go, is the man. Go, there you go. But Thank I'm you. Saying, but you, but you read the Carnegie's and everything, so. I'm just, oh. <laughs> Well, a man wears a man wears a uh, a, a button down shirt with a with a sweater over it, and, and he's wearing cardigans right. now. No, no, I I'm think you saying. just called me Carlton on Will Smith. Oh, That's God. messed up, dude. I, I, well, I'm just basically saying. So, so wait a minute. If if this I'm, is yeah, you, you made it good. The, no, this, this is good the thing. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I'm Will, Will Smith. Are you? And you Car- man, yes, I'm a, yes. I, I almost <laughs> unplugged my microphone. All right, so. <laughs> Let me bring things full circle. The way that we were going to start this episode, the title of this episode was supposed to be business versus creative. Mm-hmm. And what we were going to do was we were going to start off by giving you guys a little clip we may have when you listen to this. But we're going to give you a we were going to give you a clip of some kind of information that kind of broke that the the two sides down. And then Jody Notch and Intuna were going to debate on that. What ended up happening, though, is we ended up having an all-out debate on business versus creative in regards to the actual show itself. Yeah. For about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm sweating. I'm that I'm that heated because we were going back and forth. In my argument, I was trying to keep the mics on while we were doing it and say, this is an excellent show. This is an excellent topic. Excellent topics. I can't even talk right now because now I'm slurring the words. But at first, I was sleepy. Now I'm up. Mm-hmm. You had Mountain Dew. I had good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, argument, I would say it was, it was debate, whatever. But Jody Notch had lunch or dinner, I shall say, like <laughs> hand delivered to him. And it's cold now. Like That's how long we've been arguing. So, yes, the 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 the, the main target of this show was supposed to be business versus creative and the breakdown of the two yeah you know where where jotty notch sits and where i sit as far as how we perceive that so if we're going to start this off i I, maybe i should say my opinion man go ahead you you i'll start by saying i love creatives yeah but creative people can be some of the most difficult people to work with unorganized oftentimes 
I'll give you that. And the work that comes out seems to only be driven off of emotion okay. and inspiration. And so if you have a team and a business person is, is part of your team, yeah, that is very hard to do, to have a consistent schedule around a creative like that. Yeah. That is tough. This podcast right. is hard. <laughs> <laughs> this is tough, man. Yeah. But I would say on the business side, though. Oh, here we go. Here we go. On you got gloves side. on. You got gloves <laughs> on. But on the business side, I feel like they are so conservative. Mm -hmm. They can't see past, like, they can't let something just be, or they can't let it just flow, in a sense, to figure it, like, kind of figure it out. They got to already have it. They already have the whole thing in mind. They had the order in the business. They already see the audience. They already see everything. They have all the answers. And sometimes that order and that structure sometimes interferes with the creative side of, okay, there may be some changes to adjust. There's certain things that we can do. And a lot of great things came out of just random stuff. And then the business side comes in and then, Brings the order, of course. I mean, they, they bring the business and everything and how we're going to make money in the situation or all of that. Order is good. I'm glad you said that because if it wasn't for business, creative would I be living you, I out of a garbage can. I gave you that, by the way, though. I, okay, I okay. I, gave so you, I, I, gave so you, I, I don't get I that shot, point. I shot, I shot. No, no, no. I'm saying I shot on my on my end of the court. It gave you a point. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just, okay, I'll take it. Because, no, it, 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 I get it. But still, there's no... It's hard for creatives to create in a space of already thinking, business thinking they already know. Case in point, culture and hip hop, you know what I mean? Or anything. And I'm, I'm just throwing, I'm just as an example. Right. Right. But culture and hip hop, that's why so many people be going in about underground. Underground to me sounds way better than what's commercialized because business comes in and try to create that. Here's what's not fair. Creatives want their cake and they want to eat it too. <laughs> they want to create with no boundaries, no controls, no nothing around them, yet they still want to create and be famous and well known for the work and the art that they that they're doing. Now, the the artwork is appreciated, but what I what I I often feel is that the business side is the one that saves creatives from themselves, sets up structures and opportunities around them so they yeah. can be successful, whether they're even knowing it or not. Right. I'm sure there have been musicians, painters. Uh, I can't even think right now, but all kinds of artists and creatives that had people on their team, business people on their team. Yeah that were trying to help them out the whole time. Now, here, let me give you a point. Okay. There are a lot of artists that have been basically swindled out of all their money. That's, <laughs> what, I'm up, that's what I was going to say, you know? <laughs> Because they come in, oh, I got the structure for you, all right. And I take, <laughs> I take that, I take that, your house, everything, too. Yeah. Just, uh, here, here's a, here's a uh, you know, a dictionary size document. Just sign it. Don't read it. Right. Sign it, but you'll be fine. <laughs> I'll take care of you. In that whole sense of things, now we're just talking about now moving forward when you do have the business structure and when you do have all the uh, stuff around the creative, it stifles the creative because sometimes, in, in a sense, because a lot of times in business, they want the consistency. Okay, that worked that one time. We got to keep going with that. We got to keep going. We got to keep going. We got to keep it doing that way. No, What's no, no. What's wrong with that? Don't change that. Don't change. Don't go... You know what I mean? Uh, uh, either further with it. Don't don't make nothing else new. I want to just keep that. And, and it's hard sometimes as a creative to do that consistently because as a creative, we want to keep creating and not uh, have to create a job for ourselves. When it just comes mundane, it becomes a job. It becomes... And that's my point is creatives want to eat their cake. Have I mean, have their cake and eat it too. You want to 
create and not be challenged and, and no, I'm sorry, left to be free to do your creation without any controls or any type of structure around it. And you want to be able to create freely yet be successful, be recognized right. and be okay. I, I honestly think that in true creativity, which I, I personally appreciate, let me say that because yeah. for the sake of this discussion, I'm the antagonist right now. <laughs> you get to be emotional, but, but it's I mean, cool. But but at the same time, I would say this. And when I was just now, I'm, I'm this is just a fact. Business is creative too. They, I mean, it's creative in in, in a sense, but in the, but in a sense of trying to figure out, you know, because in marketing you got to be creative, and right. other things you got to be creative around the business. There's creative ways of making money. There's creative ways to do things, and. Saying it all this, even if it's a debate and all of this, both parties is needed to make it a successful, you know what I mean? Make a successful business, period. You're starting to sound like a politician. I like it. Hey, now, see now. <laughs> 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 no, well, I, no, I'm not going to, it's not going to just hit you over the head with it. I'm just letting you know, I know the need on both sides. I know the need, uh, as far as I'm on, I'm standing on the creative side, but I understand the need on the business side. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes the business can get in a way of uh, um, evolving and and um, going in and, and making that. And for business, creatives can have a huge ego that is not, it is not controllable or conducive to making any type of a product that will be successful for that artist or for their the partners that are with them. See, here's the problem. I think artists oftentimes have a single-minded focus and forget that they got a team of people around them, people that are are partially depending on them to to bring their part of their art to the table. Yeah. And I, and I think artists sometimes forget that, especially the more successful you get, you start to forget that you've got people around you that are, are they make a living off of whether you're going to produce or not. Yeah. And it is a hard road to walk. Mr. Jimmy Iovine on the defiant ones brings that up in talking about, uh, Dr. Dre, what, uh, death row. Good one, good uh, one. What were the other bands he had? Uh, um, yeah, Eminem, he had, uh, no, but the uh, Manson, Marilyn oh, Manson, Marilyn Manson yeah. uh, and, and then a couple of other groups. But he talked about trying the struggle of of walking that line in the craziness of giving their room to be creative. Yeah. And still trying to support them mm. and, and giving them that that room so they can be what they, they needed to be. But that had to be difficult. I mean, look at him. He has no hair. <laughs> <laughs> he had a head full of hair when he started. And, yeah. and he, so but that I mean, has to be a tough job because he's a counselor, everything to try and keep that line. Yeah. You know, but think about Steve Jobs, like Steve Jobs. Yes. Steve Jobs. Now we're going in. Well, now what was he though? Was he, he business or was he creative? And he, sm he smoked a lot of, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like, um, he understood both, but he was mainly a, he was a creative to me. I, I would say he's creative because, uh, well, he had the vision. He had the vision and he saw certain things. He knew uh, the direction of the company, which is the business. He knew where the company would go. But as far as forming the products and knowing what type of products or whatever, or he, he was creative of revolutionizing even just the company. And just what how he saw it, and as far as how he talked to his techs, because I know he didn't touch, he didn't program anything, he didn't do in that in order, but he understood. He was creative in understanding the direction of where technology was going to go. As far as he understood how powerful these phones was going to be, he understood what these MacBooks were. They were like uh, creating these MacBooks. He understood. All right, I'll give you a point because he got kicked out of his company because he did have a vision yeah. that was so far ahead of what his business partner, the, basically the board of Apple yeah. they in, didn't the, understand in the what mid to late eighties, didn't understand what he was trying to do right. by taking the computer to consumers and they kicked him out of the company. Yeah. See artists often pay. And what happened to the numbers? Okay. Look, look man, <laughs> 
Unfortunately, I have to give you that. The business board me. I mean, unfortunately, I have to give you that point. I I don't like the fact that I have to give that to you, but uh, I, I will give you that point. But he got kicked out and had to uh, live in the wilderness for a little while and come back because the board did not see the vision of Steve Jobs wanting to take Apple computers to the consumer. Before yeah. then, it was just only the big companies. Right, right, you know, right. Business, that was the focus. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'll give you that point. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah, you're yeah. all right. But in all, but in all sense, creative and it's it's a weird thing because i i feel like i can relate to a lot of creatives all over the the thing is we do we create these platforms we create certain things but we do need the money to back up these ideas and we do need do you i disagree you don't well well it depends on what type of ideas like because uh facebook there, well, facebook the, well no Mark Zer- uh, Zerberg, I, the uh, uh, in episode one the kanye cl- clip you use with Kanye and, okay. and Sway going back and forth. Sway Good was point. like, no, use your own money. Good point. And Kanye was like, no, in order to get to a certain level, I need to yeah. have investors. Yeah. So maybe that's your example. If you're trying to do what art on a certain scale. Yeah. You if you're trying support. to go to a certain level, like I would depend on what level you're trying to go to. Yeah. So if you are a clothes designer and you're trying to do your thing, you're definitely going to need a lot of money for material. You're going to need money to back up your ideas and concepts. You have your sketches. You have your, if you're in technology and creative in that world and in that world, you're going to need, you know, money to back up that technology to go even further in whatever the vision that you have. Case in point, Steve Jobs needed invested investment money to go further in what he was doing. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he had the same thing. He needed money to go further in the vision and in, in the creative thing that he had together and the vision that he had. But in a sense, we all can start somewhere and we can we can build that thing up. But we do need the structure within because you you made a good point. In creative, in the creative world, and I would say this about myself, I do have some, I, a lot of times have a problem uh, staying organized with my yeah, thoughts. Yeah, you do. Okay, well, I, well, I can admit that. <laughs> I do. I, I, But at the same time, in that creation or in that po- the period of me being emotional and my, in that period of whatever is going on, beautiful stuff comes out of it, man. It, it Beautiful stuff comes out. Unfortunately, and, and actually, I have to you said agree something with you. to me today, though. Unfortunately, you said I have to agree. And you said something today, uh, today that kind of did uh, 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 trigger my ego. Oh, no. you hit at me. No, it didn't kind of. It did. <laughs> we and were, I was going to save it for the show. I was, I, was, I was in a position where I seek to try to understand. <laughs> I try to let people speak so that they get their perspective and All emotions right. and feelings out. All right. And that was taken as me being patronizing. No, dude, you was being patronizing. Oh no, I'm gosh. not. No, that ain't the reason. They, they went from that point. It was the point in which how you try to articulate or try to how to, how you try to reword what I was saying and to your understanding, <laughs> and then vice versa. That's what the thing that kind of. And I was like, yo, don't don't patronize me and thinking I'm not like. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm not thinking on your level, you know, or on that space. As if, as if I, I did a Jedi mind trick on you, man. That's no. not what happened. And and blame, I, well, it could be ego as well, but I'm saying in a whole sense, that's what I was saying patronize. Because I know, I already know you, I understand what you're saying from your side. All I'm doing is trying to come up with a easier flow in which we both can dance on. Jotty Notch, I was just trying to come to some love and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, play the hero. Okay, man, you got it. I'll be the victim. I, will, I mean, not the victim. I will be the, I'll be the villain. I will say that. I'll be the villain. All right, I'll so do that. in researching this topic, I, I was watching a YouTube clip of Mr. Well, Professor Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And he talks a lot about creativity. And so hopefully I'm kind of, you know, paraphrasing this correctly, but... He talked about creatives are the ones that uh, society depends on to really change the world. Yeah. But he said the other side to that is, unfortunately, creatives are the ones also at most risk for failure. Yeah. And most risk for not being likely to succeed. He even told a, a really cool story about in companies, 
oftentimes uh, companies are so conservative that on the lower level positions, they weed out the creative people in the lower level positions because they don't want people being creative. Yeah. So if you're in a company and, um, you know, it's your, your, you're the first hire, they don't want you stepping outside of the box, the instructions that they have for you. So you go to college, you get your first job, right? do what I tell you, yeah. don't, don't do your own thing. So yeah. those people often get weeded out or are considered bad employees. While the conservative ones do what they're told, excel in the job, and then they move up. And then you you look up a couple of years later and the organization hasn't come up with anything innovative or new. You've got a bunch of people in upper management that just did what they were told, didn't right. rock the boat. Right. And now the organization is begging for uh, creativity. But guess what? You got rid of all those people at the begin at the early stages of the job. Right, right. So Professor Jordan Peterson was was pretty cool because he talked about hey, creatives are the ones that move the culture forward. 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 Personality traits determine voting patterns to a great degree, so people vote their temperaments. And this is something that's really useful to understand when you're engaged in a political discussion, is that the person across the table from you who holds viewpoints other than yours is not doing it because they're stupid or ill-informed. They're doing it because they are not the same sort of person you are. And the, the funny thing about, about creative people versus conservative people, say, or liberal people versus conservative people, is that liberals start companies and conservatives run them. <laughs> So and it, I, so you do need. Mean I'm that. glad you to know you need other. conservatives. Yeah, I was yeah well, they, they, they're managers. Like conscientious people make good managers and good administrators. It's and they tend to do better in school too because diligence and dutifulness is an excellent predictor of academic performance. So if you want something, if you want something that's already been invented, implemented, and then turned into a machine, you don't get someone creative to do that. They're off to do the next thing. They're not even interested in that. You'll bore them to death. As crazy as we think, and I keep saying Kanye, but as crazy as we think he is, Kanye was actually right. It, yeah. <clears throat> true change comes from people who are creative, but there's right. a big risk in that. Yeah. And so the, the final piece that uh, Professor uh, Jordan Peterson talks about is creatives need to come to some kind of balance, either in um, routine, schedule, or in their team by having another side that can kind of balance them out right and uh keep them kind of in the in in the lane so they yeah, be I creative agree. have room to be creative but then have that other side yeah that kind of keeps you in check however you do it yeah you know so i i thought that was pretty insightful so i i give you i give you some credit <laughs> creative yeah. people Straight up. you know run no the, but you are 100 right we but we are our uh our worst enemy as mm -hmm. well as because in, 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 in so many ways we see things for what it is or what we want to do and how we want to do it but a lot of times don't always count up the cost and really put the whole oh, uh, man. pieces together as far as what really um the realistic side of yeah. what it's going to really take to get there and in so many ways as a creative there is a lot of soul searching as well. I mean, if you if you really look at people's art, and I, I for me, my art, I didn't really sit down with me making music or DJing. I self taught myself, but I grew in those things as I grew personally. If you really in okay. tune with what you uh, really in tune with what you're doing, uh, really in tune with it as far as connected with it. On, on a deeper level as far as emotions and what she was cracking jokes about and all of that and, and everything and whatever. Uh, but on a serious, in a serious note, in a way I found, I found, I found it that I didn't have to really like focus on the actual creative deal. I just had to focus on myself because mm -hmm. a lot of times we're gifted in, 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 in the arena to like, formulate whatever the thing we're going to do. Yeah, you put the 10,000 hours in, but because you put the 10,000 hours in whatever craft you're doing, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're creating new ideas. A lot of times you're practicing old concepts and old things to get to the space to where you get comfortable to master that craft, to go in, to be creative. 
And a lot of that, in that whole experience of uh, developing is developing yourself and developing who you are to get to that point. So a lot of times when you moving in a certain way or you doing certain things, a lot of times, man, uh, there's a, a lot of us, we get caught up in the creative side to the point we're trying to find things to keep us inspired and keep us uh, outside of ourselves, keeps us inspired to keep getting that new thing. There's a lot of people that turn to like marijuana, they turn to weed, they turn to all these other things or they turn to sex. Psychedelics. Turn, yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all types of things. <laughs> I'm thinking Pink Floyd or something like yeah, that. Yeah, to get them to that other level to kind of like, get over that bridge to get to that point to where, okay, I want to go to the most creative that I can possibly get to. And Is that what happened to Basquiat, by the way? Man, well, Basquiat was more, yeah, I, I will say that, and but he was more uh, fighting. He had internal demons inside in him. As but was he, using, was he using drugs to kind of cope? He was just coping. Yeah, okay. his thing was cold. But but that's not what triggered his creativity. Yeah, no, the dude was just yeah. that's just who he was. He yeah. walked around like uh in the beginning of all, he was just going around New York, uh tagging buildings, spray spray painting buildings and everything, and did these like uh dope quotes and messages that he put on a deal and then signed and he signed on the bottom and whatever. And uh that's how he was known at one point. Mm-hmm. And then he went into uh, painting kind of by accident and then just thought that, okay, he was always drawing and doing all that, but that was just a raw talent that he had. There's certain people that just got raw talent, you know, uh, that just start sketching or start just playing music. There's people that just jumped on the keys for the first time and just knew how to play. And right. that's what, that was a thing. That was where he was at. But the thing is, his internal b- battle inside, and that's why I was talking about, like, a lot of times we focus – on the gift, which will open the door. But internally, we are, we're killing ourselves. We, we're we not really going in depth in ourselves and really dealing with the things that we need to deal with to get over uh, that hump to really have. And I, I we talk about this all the time, of having that full quality of life mm-hmm. and, and going in. But... What I find it organizing your thoughts, organizing your time, organizing and structuring more structure around because it's like a beast, dude. You're walking around here and you're just like, oh, I want to I got so much on my mind. I got so much I want to do. I got all of this. And it's almost like you got to tame that beast to know that in order to get uh, the vision out and how you want to get a vision. But a lot of that. And I'm going on to your point on the business side, formulating that team. Mm. And a lot of us, we just jump out and we think, oh, I got something special that nobody else <laughs> got. Right. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want nobody to touch. I don't want nobody to see it. And, and you, you're making me think of the uh, that complex video of the team that was talking about uh, SZA. Yeah. Where yeah. she she was very talented and she had a bunch of. Uh, albums recorded, uh, right. I'm sorry, a bunch of records recorded that she didn't even like or recognize as good, but it took the team that had a uh, perspective outside of her to basically take that and say, no, this is really good. Even though yeah. she was sitting over there, not really excited about it. And then yeah. they put it out and the songs that she didn't even care for were the hit songs. Hit songs. I understand with SZA, you were responsible for pushing the album back and also for forcing her to write all of the songs herself. Mm -hmm. How did you arrive at that decision? And two, how did you communicate that and get her on board with that? Well, she's a very, very complex artist, complex person. So she don't view herself all the time how the masses actually view her. Like, she'll do something incredible. Everybody will love it. And she'll feel like, eh, it's okay. Then it'll be, I hate it. So it's like trying to navigate through that. I don't want to kill her process at the same time. So it's like, you're threading the needle with it. Like, you got to be very cautious, 
very delicate on, on how you approach that situation. But at some point, you got to say, all right, stop the album coming out or stop recording because it'll go on forever. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah, I mean, it's the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Q-Tip did the same thing. Q-Tip, uh, uh, I, still haven't watched that. Quest. I still haven't watched that documentary. You didn't watch that documentary. What's the name of it? Um, I forgot the name of it. Documentary. But uh, Tribe Called Quest was the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Q-Tip was so, he produced the whole album and he was so attached to his work. He didn't want to, it was never perfect. To his A&Rs and his manager had to come in there and say, yo, it's done. Give it to me. And then put it out and it it blew up, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, another person, Michael Jackson, same way. He's a perfectionist. Like, it's, it's never going to be, because in our heads we visualize, we want this this feeling we want it to be so perfect, but it would never, it's never going to. Mm-hmm. Because once it gets to a certain place, you're just going to be like, uh, it could get better. Mm-hmm. Or what we do, we'll do our thing and then we'll go listen to something else or we'll go see something yeah. else. And we're like, oh man, they killed me. I got to go back and, you know, and tweak it. You're making me think about that line between money and what is true art. Or what is true creative? Yeah. If you're a true creative, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're a true creative and you're trying to work from your heart and get that thing that's in your head and in your heart out on canvas or or on the record or whatever it is. To me, that is that far exceeds the need for money. Yeah. But oftentimes, but you know, there there is that side of the whole create creativity where things are measured by money. You know, yeah. where where as an artist, you start to kind of become resentful because you're not seeing as much money as you would like to, um, or or it seems like there's two camps. There are the artists that are so into whatever the discipline is that if you start making money, you have sold out. Yeah. You're not true. You're not real. Right. So there's two sides. And I, and I kind of wonder if you are an artist or a creative, that, then that's your job. Just create. Yeah. Don't worry about the money side. You know, that, yeah. that, 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 that should be it. Whether you make money or not, you should be fine. Right. And so I don't know. I, I, I don't live in that world, but I do see kind of the, the two sides where, okay, I want to be creative, but again, I've said it a while ago, people want their cake and and to eat it too. Yeah. I want to be creative. I want to have my freedom. Don't mess it up with business. Don't come in here with process. Yeah. Um, but yet I want to be famous and financially successful. Straight up. And I almost feel like you have to make a choice in your life that, okay, if I get to create for the rest of my life, but I don't make a lot of money, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Now, you being a creative, is that a choice you've made for yourself that that if you never make a lot of money, you'll be okay? Or is the just the vision of where you're trying to go so so clear that you, that that's not an option? Um, or have you even thought about that? I mean, nah, I, man, uh, I mean, I mean, I think I think you do think about it every now and then about money. Yeah, but I think now what's so brilliant, what's so smart? We talk, I think we talked about this earlier today is that me understanding my weaknesses and my strengths. And I think the business side of creatives or what would be the smartest thing for creatives to do is to create a team around them and create and have someone that does focus on that. I love how LeBron James is doing for his, what he did for himself. He got a team around him. Is he a creative? I will. I would, I'm just saying as far as the, I I mean, he came. He's an athlete. No, he's a, he's a mutant. Yeah, he's an X Man. He's an X Man. But, but I, I love I love the his team that he's constructed as far as around him outside say, of the, outside of basketball. Exactly. His you focus team. on basketball, and we will focus on the business side. You have no worries on this. You trust us. We trust you to do what you do, and we you know. And I think that's where it goes back to what I was just saying about with cre- with creatives when it comes to that point of uh, business. What's scary about it, they just scared because they don't know it. Because once you start making money and once you start getting understanding, you see a lot of the artists that went through 
And I'm just talking about the music artists that mm-hmm. went through in the 90s. Most of them went through hell in the 90s. They went through it. They was going through. Even, even though they were financially successful. They, I mean, that, that, that's open to opinion okay. as far as what you, what you depend or what you think is successful as far as monetarily. Because a lot of kids, they were breaking, they were giving them uh, advances, big advances and all this money and everything, whatever. But they didn't, a lot of them didn't have no business sense on what to do with the money. As you can see now, those that are still standing like the Diddy's, the Jay-Z's and certain people that knew about it and, um, and other people like, you know, Russell Simmons and all these other people. Hey, rock and roll or, you know, rock bands, they're doing all right. Yeah. Or at least I think so. Well, in the hip hop thing, everybody's trying to keep it organic and trying to keep it real. And, and, and I think in all aspects, I think all of them went through that. Even rock, rock and roll. Uh, it's just, it's a different thing on that side, you know, as opposed to now hip hop has got to that point to where it's in that arena of pop and all of that. But as you look, listen to the radio, it's not what depicts what really is going on on the streets and what's going on underground and what is going on. Because you got radio is just business. Mm-hmm. It's just, yo, we're going to, we're going to play this same record every hour on the hour. But here's the question. If you are an artist or a creative, are you successful if you never make a dime? Are you successful if you never make a dime? Yeah. That's that's the I well and I know it's in it's every each individual's interpretation. Yeah. Well, yeah, but me personally, I don't think so because uh um You don't you, think that you're successful if you're a creative? No, because, and you're producing. because you will want to do that if you're really passionate about that and that's what you want to do, whatever it is you want to do, you got to figure out how to make money. You got to survive off of it. Okay, but okay, you sur- you survive, you make it. So you, what you're really saying success is, is you're creative doing your art and you're able to make a living off of it. It's yeah. not that you're rich. It's not that you're a millionaire. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. It depends on what how you want to do it in success or monetarily, but... You gotta make if you if that's what you want to do and that's your passion, you have to make money or something, and you gotta make you have you gotta make a living. Can you not? Can you not be someone that works a corporate job and then when you leave the corporate job, you go become the creative? Um, yeah, but I mean that's why I say it depends on the person. If if you really if if the corporate job because if you want the security of a job Mm -hmm. in order to do what you whatever you're gonna do, that's what you want to do. So be it, and you just want to use it as because some people create. They're creatives, but it's a hobby. Mm-hmm. We we got we know a lot of people that are very talented and that could have went far in like doing fashion and uh, man graphic design, yeah. all types of things. And that we've seen and we're like, yo, this these people are so unreal, and they not. It does they hurt. Just, they just kind of just say, yo, I just I need I want I want the comfort of this job. I want this, and. I would just do that on the side. And we're, and you see people that is half the talent or don't even have near the talent of these people and they're making a lot of money doing the thing that they, that on this other side, know how to do better. Right. And that's the thing that's kind of disheartening sometimes. Yeah, that's a painful that thing side. to see. Yeah. Because some, you're sacrificing comfortability to, because there is risk in, in going this creative role there is a certain lifestyle that you're going to, uh, in one of the videos that we uh, were listening to, um, that you sent me, mm-hmm. I can't name the uh, was it exact Was one. it the one from Vice where they were talking? Yeah, the one the, from Vice, yeah. The, there was a, so uh, there was a Vice clip that I sent Jotty with four artists, uh, four artist panel, and they were just talking about different aspects of making music. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, making money. Uh, through your art form. Right. And they were showing yeah. how little, like even though times have changed and technologies come in, absolutely, how the artist is still getting pennies on the dollar of the revenues. Right, right. You know, of what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, like, and so in that interview that you sent me, it just kind of, that's what the dude was talking about. He said, uh, it was a dude on there, he was talking about it depends on what lifestyle that you want to, if you want to take this creative road and you want to be an artist, then there's a certain lifestyle that you, you have to understand that you're going to have to take. Yeah. And they joked about say, having ramen and 
all of that and um eating and wearing certain clothes over and over again and doing whatever and just living a certain lifestyle. And I think in a way, it's just entrepreneurs. Have you made money off of uh, music? And, and if so, how much? And tell us how to do it. Money has occurred. How much is kind of nebulous. Money know. has occurred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meaning, you know, it, it's not a windfall, but uh, it's a functioning, it's a functioning outfit, you know? But you can't make a living off of this. I mean, you, you can, it just depends on your standard of living, to be honest. I mean, you can certainly, I Depends mean, how much honestly, like this, this, this is an age-old <laughs> yeah, exactly. thing with being an artist. You yeah. can do it if you're willing to sort of cut certain corners. You have to delude yourself and think you can keep doing this. <laughs> the music business was never about fairly compensating musicians and making sure that they ate. It was, you know, a way to get a widget out of them that you could then sell. That game has changed. Um, and it's probably actually a better deal for a smaller number of people. And by that, I mean artists who own and control their own work and get paid in different ways. I think I think in the business world, there is a there's the equivalent to that in terms of there's corporate business people. Right. And then there is the. I guess you'll you'll just say entrepreneur in that. You're the person that comes up with an idea and a vision and you and you have to start with almost with next to no resources. Right. And come up with a product, put it in front of a customer. And to me, that's the road I walked. I had a corporate job and and uh, got to a point to where I had an opportunity to take the big leap with yeah. some friends and build a, a, a tech product. And, um, you know, and then go after that. Oh, my bad. <laughs> hey, you just hey, man. burned it. Like, Dude, hey, the, 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 the Mountain Dew crash is real. <laughs> I had caffeine high and it man, just dropped on me. Saw he just looked like he was about to fade just oh, now. Oh, man, like, my bad. <laughs> no, but no, yeah. So, so my background coming from the corporate world and making that jump with some friends to create a tech product and, and in doing that, I do feel like kind of like that starving artist mode for a really long time. Yeah. We had, we all, we all, I think all that was driving us was passion and, and, and vision of just trying to get this idea out. If we can only make this and then get it in front of the people we think will right. like it. Right. And maybe that that's the closest thing in terms of business that we can kind of feel like we're artists too. There's something inside of us, something that we see, we see a, the world working in a certain way. Yeah. That we're just trying to get that out through our technology, yeah. you know, or service, whatever the business is. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, we're the creatives of the business world. Right. Right. Uh, I think even uh, what is it? The Dr. Jordan Peterson. He even said that yeah. he said the creatives that didn't make it up the corporate ladder that didn't make it past that first level. Right, right. He said they're the ones who typically are the ones who are entrepreneurs. Yeah. They end Absolutely. up leaving corporate America because they are creative and then they go in. I mean, look, Steve Jobs worked for Atari. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Did you know that? He worked yeah, for yeah. Atari. And yeah. uh, I, I don't remember exactly how the story went. There was like a competition to, to add circuits. I think uh, there was a competition to add like um, to basically build out a circuit board that could be more powerful for their Atari games. Yeah. And that's where he went and got Wozniak to help him. I think he won the little contest and then didn't give Wozniak the full amount, the full split. It wasn't 50, mm. 50, but no, there's examples of that all over the place. It's people right. that have a creative mind, but th those are the people that you first get a job and you kind of look around and you're like, why are they doing it? This is stupid. Yeah. And your manager is just like, well, this is, this is the, this is the protocol. Right. You know, this is how and things are done. It's frustrating because it's like, we can, you can knock out all of this stuff in like three hours, but right. they have you there for nine hours. To right. Do the <laughs> right. And it, yeah, it took me, it took me a long time to understand that that is actually not a good thing coming into a corporation. Not a lot. I think the forward thinking corporations understand that. And they try their best to make room for uh, creativity, but a lot of them are still working in a very old school model, whether they admit it or not. Right, right. So, yeah, man, I think the, the, today's entrepreneurs that are 
taking their, you know, their, their, their time after work or doing it full time to try and create something. I think that's the equivalent of the artist trying to make something. And uh, so, yeah, man, a lot of the things you, you feel as an artist and sensitive yeah. about your stuff. <laughs> um, I can say, I, I, I feel those on my side when, yeah. you know, building out a product, man. So, but I, but I feel like in, in with, with that said and not to, and I know you're not saying this, but, um, I think it's necessary to have like those energies or sometimes them emotional <laughs> fits sometimes because uh, uh, I mean, everybody is cut from a different thing, you know, and sometimes on the creative side, like I said, when you're attached to certain things emotionally, and you're attached to it and you're like, ah, these thoughts, it took me this long to do or, <laughs> you know, however uh, it comes out. You want to kind of keep it at, keep it at its authentic place, then you know, and and keep it at its original space, or keep it at its, you know, where it was. If there's painters that have sin they threw on there, or you know, pick up a piece of cloth and just throw it on a painting or whatever, they want to keep it at its original thing because at that time that's what they felt and that's what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And um, and. Also, it's necessary to have the business structure as well. And 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 I feel like in order for as a creative, we could talk about the negative sides of it, but if a creative will open their mind up to to even considering structure and understanding that, that's where the evolution of that person will start to evolve and then they'll transcend to the thing that they really wanted to do. And I had and it took me a little bit to learn that. And I think, uh, well, welcome to my side, man. I appreciate it. We, <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, no, nah, but you know, nah, yeah. and, and, and I, in all honesty, dude, yeah, you helped me with that. Like when I first met you, I was like, just all over the place and was just, um, man, I know how to do this, do this. You listen to it. A it lot it of only, it only took 10 years, but we made it. <laughs> we made it. And we did certain things. And, uh, and I would show you certain concepts I was working on, but, it took a certain mind to understand that and to take it from the space where I was at and you be like, all right, dude, I see what you're trying to do and that's what mm-hmm. it is. Or this book right here or however. And I think it's been a ongoing and kind of uh tit for tat type of uh, friendship. Like there's certain perspectives that I have that help on uh, your end on, on business as well as like in your endeavors yeah. and creative and then vice versa for me. But I feel like in order to get to a certain place and actually grow and and be successful, you got to have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it all the way, all the way in by yourself, you, I, I encourage everybody. Well, who can really? Nobody. Right. And I encourage everybody to find or open their minds up to, you know, if I never like. Everybody needs a tune. (laughs) (laughs) And a Johnny, get out of here, dude, this dude. But, uh. (laughs) But if I but if, but if I went in the room, like, all right, so if I, I went to the, I was cutting hair at first. Mm-hmm. This is how uh, me and Toon uh, met. I was yeah, going to the college apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So I went and I was cutting hair and uh, I was cutting his roommates hair. And every week I go and, and cut them up. And Toon, we were talking about something and then Toon came from the side and said something and whatever. And then I was like, hey, gave my opinion. And then we ended up talking for a good, probably a good hour, mm-hmm. and we're just talking. And then it, uh, I think every time we came, it just, every time I came over each week, it just expounded from there with ideas and concepts. Because at the time, you were doing um, top-down music. Mm-hmm. And I thought what you was doing, uh, he was bringing artists over to his crib, recording them. And he had this, he was actually, he had the early podcast <laughs> Internet deal early on. I was trying to break <laughs> new music, Jody. I was yeah. trying to break new artists from a- every part of the country I could. I was using a website called MySpace. That's how bad <laughs> it was. <laughs> Whatever that website is. Straight up. Yeah. And, dude, I, I thought that was fascinating. And just in the world that you was in and then in my space, I was, man, no pun intended. But in... The- <laughs> <laughs> But I, it, <laughs> you you want to know what's bad? It took it took me like ten full seconds to get that that pun. I was like, oh oh oh, oh that's clever. Oh, but anyway, but yeah, through all of that, 
those areas, I recognize the areas that you had and um, you was going to OU and that people right now think or thought that I went to OU because I was walking around cutting hair with my backpack and everything. (laughs) I was walking around. But yeah, if I wasn't open and to having certain conversations and everything, I think the collaboration, plus me and you uh, uh, linking up and then we getting to the place where we are now 10 years later and uh, man, brothers now, and both have like uh, encouraged and strengthened in areas where we was both lacking at and got to this place. But there's a lot of people, especially creatives, they are very uh, introverted as far as not trying to talk or don't trust people and don't want to open up or don't want to do certain things. Man, you are missing uh, your door that maybe your 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 process, your gift is probably inside. It's in someone else's hands as well as your own. You have a gift, but someone can take that gift and and pass the rock and go in other places to where you can go. And I feel like we all got to uh, create our own basketball teams, man. Everybody can't be, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody can't be hey, Westbrook. Man, I didn't know what you were about to I say. Know. I was like. <laughs> I had to come out. Why every time, man, I'll make my. <laughs> yeah, uh, basketball references. <laughs> Or analogies, period. Yeah. It's just like, yo, yeah. man, I ain't know. But yeah, we all got to create our own, you know, teams and knowing that everybody has their own place. But within that whole team, it takes all of us to get over and win and go to all the way to the championship and make it happen. It isn't. I have to be honest. I'm kind of disappointed at how this podcast actually ended because we, I, I feel like we needed to be on opposing sides the whole entire time. Man. <laughs> Cause I I really wanted to win this this argument, dude. You already lost, so that's what the oh whole thing. Gosh, you man. lost where right, it started. I just did it in here a silent go. way. I just calmed it down. And even it, make the here's the crazy <laughs> thing. So th- this this episode is ending on a very kumbaya type of moment, as you can hear from Jody Notch's last ten minute monologue. <laughs> Uh, of a, a unification between business and man, creative, they got to get to know like us, man. I, and that's and that's cool. Where we come from, and that's man. cool. But listen, I got a position, and I'm trying to let them know that that the business side is what holds things down. But if it was already, not for us, but you already you already made a point that creatives rule the world, man. So we run the world. So what is else do we need to talk no, about? No, creatives have the potential. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you gonna throw that potential? So yeah, but yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the 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 funny thing is, this podcast is ending on a kind of kumbaya type of moment, and then as soon as the microphone goes off, we're gonna argue about the next episode as yeah. if we didn't as if we didn't have this complete understanding through this episode to come to a, a good under understanding. No, it's, it's that still, both sides need yeah absolutely, each other absolutely, but. Us navigating the show and putting the show together is is completely different. We're talking now. We just went on a conversation as far as creatives and business. Mm. Now, when we get off this podcast, we're going to be talking about the structure of the show in which how you will want to do it and how I see how to do it. What's your vision for it and what's my vision? You mean the right way and the wrong way? See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> well, hey, everybody. No, we we uh, no, we we appreciate appreciate y'all listening to to us go back and forth on this, even though Jody's wrong. Um, and we will, you know, talk more on this offline. But um, yeah, no, check us out on uh, the Ego Trip. Uh, dang, man, I I the Mountain Dew is crashing hard. Oh, I mean, I'm just- really hard no uh the ego trip podcast on twitter uh the ego trip podcast on soundcloud as well the ego trip podcast on instagram and a website will be coming out very soon so check that out but uh we appreciate y'all mr jody notch